I've came across several discussions regarding who was historically the more privileged one, uh, men or women. Now, the comments have been under videos from the men's movement, so you can imagine which way the persuasion went. What I perceived really is an empathy gap, not unlike the feminists toward men. And I, I would like to say a few words regarding it, specifically how one could aim to close the empathy gap from both sides. The analogy regarding the dynamics between men and women that I often use is the analogy between a full-grown adult and a minor or child. Now, let me be clear, a man obviously isn't just any adult, and a woman isn't exactly like a child, or was historically treated exactly like a child. But I find the analogy to be very apt in terms of comparing between having more rights versus having more protection, and the trade-offs between the two. Now, keep in mind that we are talking about historic context here, not what happens in the current year, which I find the evidence to be quite compelling that men are significantly more disadvantaged than women. Why? Because the laws and the policies laid out as so. But historically, this hasn't always been the case. Historically, in many, if not most societies, men were given a leg up, so to speak, in societies in terms of rights of autonomy and of the society, whereas women were given more protection. Why were men given more of these rights? Because they had and continue to have, I might add, more responsibilities to society. Women did not have responsibilities to society. Their responsibility was to the household and to the husband as head of the household. So they were not given these rights. And so you have situations such as men were given harsher sentences, even if it was easier for men to climb that social ladder and independently accumulate wealth, whereas the opposite holds true for women. Just like an adult versus a minor. As an adult, you have more rights, you can vote, you can drive a car, you can get drunk at a party, you can join many organizations and have way more opportunities for work and become independent. But if you commit a crime, you would be given harsher sentences, any misgivings, you would be held to a higher standards. So then you have a trade-off between the privileges you have as a minor and the privileges you gained as an adult, and the privileges you lost as an adult and privileges you didn't have as a minor. And that was the case between men and women historically as well. Not in all situations did men have privileges or disadvantages, and not in all situations did women, did women have privileges or disadvantages because it would depend on many factors in regards to the individual and what the individual wants in life and what the situation regarding the individual is. Now, one may argue that women on average had more privileges than men all throughout history. There can be compelling case made in favor of that statement. But then again, I can also make this case with even more compelling evidence that white people on average all across history of the Americas are more privileged than black people. Keep in mind that history of the Americas is only roughly 200 to 400 years old and quite well documented. There are many things regarding the gender roles and dynamics between men and women we do not yet know, especially if we go far back enough in human history, as not many ancient records were kept. So what if I stated that white people were always the privileged ones? I bet many of my audience would have an issue with that statement, just as they had issues with Bernie Sanders' statement that white people have never known poverty. Now imagine if he tried to defend himself by saying, what I really meant was white people on average had always been richer than black people on average. Would this fly? Of course not. So what? Averages do not give you very much information. It can have certain predictability, but when you talk about how we should behave in society towards each other, what are the laws and policies, averages should not dictate these things because we understand it's the individual that matters, and that is the fundamental tenet in a liberal society. Now, the interesting thing that often happens when I use the adult and mind analogy in a debate is that both feminists and certain people from the men's side, shall we say those who have stronger feelings about women, 
go into full defense mode. Instead of countering my analogy with, oh yeah, sure, children were always the privileged ones over adults, in the case of the men's side, or sure, adults were always more privileged than children, historically, in the case of the feminists, they would say something like, in the case of the feminists, what are you talking about? Women had it way worse than children. Women had to take care of the house, take care of the children, take care of the husbands, and many times the husband's family. Children didn't have to do any of that. Or I would have this, certain people from the men's side going, what are you talking about? Women had it way better than children. They run the household and organize it however they want. They get money from the husband to buy pretty things however they like. They can rule behind the throne. Children couldn't do any of that. If you ask me, it does seem that this analogy is making the hitting a little bit too close to home. You see, a woman could never understand from a first person's perspective what it is like to be a man. And a man could never understand from a first person's perspective what it is like to be a woman. I'm mean, leaving transgenders out of it for now. But everybody, every single adult, understands what it was like to be a minor and what it's like to be an adult. And the comparison between the two life periods in terms of advantages and disadvantages. And every adult understands that while being an adult can really suck. Being a minor isn't exactly a walk in the park either, at least for many people themselves or the people they know in their life. In fact, many people, including myself, would say that some of the worst periods in their life were when they were minor. This is why this analogy is so apt and so hard-hitting, because it hits people right in the face and immediately speaks to their personal experience. So much so that even the people who would draw the conclusion that, let's say, uh, children are more privileged than adults, would hesitate in their answer. Many of us have experienced in our ma minor years, our parents yelling at us things like, what have you to complain about? I feed you, I clothe you, I pay for your shit. You don't have to work. You don't have to take care of our family finances. You don't have to worry about a house or this or that. We understood what that felt like. That even if all of these things are true, it did not mean our life was just peaches. Just as many of us understand the envy we've had as a minor towards adults. You know, the freedom that adults seems to have, the autonomy, the independence, the liberation from being talked down to and not taken seriously, until we finally became adults and realized how much responsibility came with those things. If we want to close that gap of sympathy and empathy between each other, between men and women, I believe this is a perspective that can be used for that. In fact, when I listen to people like Karen Strong and how she described the different advantages and disadvantages that men and women have had in history, this is what immediately popped up in my head. Oh, it's just like when I was a minor and when I was an adult. And I stopped being a feminist then. Because I, just, I understood then that the concept of the patriarchy, which was just as ridiculous as the concept of quote-unquote adultarchy that we don't have a term for, because we don't live in either.